work I will be presenting is uh, um, called uh, Synthesizing Old Excavation Records and New Archaeometallurgical Data Through Functional, Spatial and Temporal Dimension. So it's a work that I've been uh, done with uh, Marion Béranger. And uh, the goal of this presentation is to uh, show a methodology that I applied to, uh, to, to question old excavation records in order to provide a good context for new archaeometallurgical um, studies. So, uh, some word about uh, archaeometallurgy. The, this project is a part of a larger project uh, which wants to understand the functionment, the organization of the iron production in the French region uh, Bourgogne-Franche-Comté. Because the, um, the production of iron necessitates uh, numerous ste uh, steps and can be um, done in uh, multiple places. I put this map as an example to to just see uh, that an ore that can be extracted here can be transformed multiple times before becoming the final object. So by studying the organization and di dynamics of this process, we uh, study the economy of the um, past societies. So the town uh, in which the, the study has taken place is just so a small part of uh, this uh, huge uh, data available uh, has been excavated multiple times especially in the second part of the um, the 20th uh, uh, century so uh, it led to the um, to the realization of a large amount of excavation reports and a large amount of unstudied uh, artifacts so the question that we want to answer in this presentation are how to synthesize a multidimensional set of data with a limited loss of information and are heterogeneous and imprecise information still relevant to understand an archaeological phenomenon. So this is just an example of the, of the material you ha we uh, had to uh, to study so the, the meteorological waste on one part and the documentation on the other. So um, on these numerous excavations, there, there are just a few that have uh, good excavation reports and even when there are excavation reports, there often lacks um, some really important part like the, just the stratigraphic unit listing or the, their um, place in the excavation. So in order to uh, give a formalized uh, context to each uh, set of meteorological uh, um, wastes, uh, the first step was to standardize the datation. So we had to go through all the documentation to find the, the description, the, the temporal description, and translate it to uh, an interval that is an interval of possible existence of the set. So since the archaeological, um, so since there's a meteorological waste can be considered deposed in a short time, most of the time, it can be represented as points on the interval. So larger the interval is, uh, less probable, probable is the, the, the presence of the set at a, a precise time. But by multiplying the, the observations, we can have an overview of the dynamics of uh, the, 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 the presence and of the activities, uh, of the meteorological activities. So, uh, at the other hand, the meteorological uh, data is already a complex one. So, uh, I, um, I showed here like a, score, a slack, uh, 
more precisely a planar convex bottom. Each slag can be uh, placed in a multidimensional space based on its uh, characteristics. And uh, in the second time, we can make uh, clusters of the slags assembly in each set to study uh, the activity, the real activity. And the goal is to conserve this data even at the higher step of the interpretation. Um, for that, uh, the OHFET model gives us an interesting uh, tool to uh, simplify the data without losing any precise uh, precision. So, in this model, each uh, time um, interval is divided so that we can have all the timeline divided in uh, the minimum um, context so the, and so have the interrogation directly on, on these uh, time intervals. So we can then make um, uh, figures like uh, this one that represents the evolution uh, of the presence of each uh, activity in uh, the town. Um, other, um, so we can make other observation, even coming back, going back to the, the, the slides itself. So we have here um, a representation of the number of slags of each type on these time intervals. It can be uh, normalized by dividing the total uh, quantity of slags by the um, length of the interval. So we can observe and identify the dynamics. So here we can see probably uh, three big um, uh, movements. So the first being more um, characterized by slags of uh, just uh, uh, shaping. The second being characterized by the, the appearance of uh, this new type. This is the type of slag that can be interpreted as um, um, reciting slags. And in the third time, uh, the, the appearance of a group that is more um, refining and uh, the, the first group that comes back. It can be also, also uh, represented in percentages where we can observe the, the same uh, structure. So this model can uh, be, um, uh, can allow a different approaches. So just as an example, I showed here the weight of each type of flag depending on the distance between the uh, deposit and the crossroad between uh, the river and the main road going to uh, Vaisonthio Besançon. So we can see that there is a very important impact on of the, the roads to uh, the, the production with a huge concentration of these uh, of these uh, remains near to the this uh, crossroad. Um, this study was just uh, done on a small scale data set, but is part of a program that's um, studying a lot of uh, similar data sets. So we will be able to uh, include in this uh, approach a lot more uh, context. There is just a map of uh, the um, of the, the, the already studied through the program of Marion Berger uh, so all the, the slacks that have already been studied. And there is even more that are already excavated but never studied. This change of, um, of uh, um, scale necessitates also to make um, clusters to be able to change the scale that is easily done with uh, this uh, quite simple um, uh, database structure. Well, where at each step of the analysis, 
we can just uh, add new clusters of the data that are done uh, crossing the dimension like functional, uh, special or um, uh, temporal uh, dimensions. It will be also be very interesting to compare this uh, dynamics of the metallurgy with other data. I put just here a map of the um, settlement patterns that are studied through the, the program um, agglomeration, agglomeration um, that is led by Stéphane Venot et, and Pierre Nouvel on the same region. So comparing the dynamics between the two would be even very interesting and we can also add uh, data as um, uh, environmental data. So as a conclusion, a conclusion, let's say that uh, this, what the, the work I presented here is a procedure that allows the creation of context and also the quantification of their precision. It allows the modeling of the organization and the dynamics of the Aryan production at the scale of the town, but it's still a very small scale study that would be uh, greatly enhanced by adding new data sets. So thank you very much for your attention.